just about sailing December, the first one in December. Um, this is part two of, of fitting the, the, the spray hood, so I ordered loads of other bits, did some fittings and fixings and things. Um, and let's have a look and see how far we get on with this particular project then, shall we? Right, so last time a few people very sensibly asked why I didn't um, clip the front of the spray hood on the new one to test it out. And I do have these um, little eyelet things for the, um, uh, what they call turn buttons. These are the eyes. And I was very tempted to just sort of punch a hole in, but I've actually got this little device, which is proper, because it is always going to end up a bit tatty and things might fray. Now these things, um, the professional ones, they cost about £70, which is ludicrous, but J. Clark Marine, I'll probably put a, a link, I'll put a link down below in the description, do this little tool for £15. It's probably not as robust and whatever, but, you know, I'm probably only ever going to do this once, and then I can keep this on board as a, as a, a thing to make spare ones. So let's, let's have a look at that. Right, so here's the Force 4 catalogue, and here's a piece of wood, and the only reason for this is that apparently it works better if you put a magazine on the top. And, yeah. <laughs> right, how hard did I hit that? Well, that went up to page 65. So I think a page 65 hit is plenty hard enough. <laughs> So these, these, are, these are proper marine grade little pins, They're not rocket science this, but I've not done it before. So basically um, the hole is absolutely perfectly beautifully cut out and where the little leg things go in they just slot straight in. You can literally just kind of bend this over with the thing I'm sure that's good enough and that feels nice and tight. <laughs> You've probably all switched off by now but I'm very proud of that. That's, that's It's just there's a satisfaction of, of doing a nice job and knowing that all the ends are kind of trimmed up neatly. Okay so slightly fortuitous change of plan. I've actually found a frame on eBay and it was actually from the same person who sold the hood. Now when I first looked at it I thought it was nowhere and the sizes was nowhere near what I was looking for but lining it up next to the um, hoops that I've done it's pretty close. Uh, one problem is that the grab rail is actually welded on and I need to either cut the cloth which I'm not going to do or gently hacks all these off. Yeah just marginally. Spot the deliberate error, I just cut the wrong end off, I meant to cut the hair. That's a little bit like sawing off the branch that you're sitting on, isn't it? Oh well, as I always say on these videos, don't copy what I do. Alright, try and smooth these bits off. I... It's a shame that I cut that the wrong way around, but it doesn't really matter. Right, so even more drawings and a parts list and pricing everything out because it's very important obviously to make sure that you have all of the components and they arrived very quickly I have to say. So here we are and you'll notice I've got two different sizes. This is the um, 7 8 and this is the um, 3 quarter because uh, the grab rails and some of the other bits I'm going to do with 7 8 pipe because it's nice to grab hold of. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I put the um, the fastenings to replace the other ones, um, as you can see. And I'm just going to fit the hood partially, um, just to get one of the measurements right. And the astute amongst you will notice that this is leaning up against a big green tank, which is actually a new water tank. The even more astute amongst you um, might notice that this says 107 litres. Now I did a, 
a sort of a fitment video I was looking and I was very keen to get to 150 uh, litres. So, two very good reasons why I've gone for this particular tank and for 107 rather than, than 150. Um, so see if you can guess, but we'll, we'll cover that in a later episode, but in the moment it's very useful for leaning things on. Right, so what I'm going to do is on the outside of here there's going to be the grab rail going to... Actually I'll tell you what, it'd probably be easiest to look at this on the boat, wouldn't it? So um, by the magic of video I'm just going to press this little button and... Um... Right, isn't green screen technology brilliant? So yeah, what I'm going to do is, that's plastic at the moment, just to, just to check out. Oh look, sorry, the camera's right in the sun, which, so I can't actually see if I'm videoing. Um, so the idea is to have those, those held up, then have another piece going from here to there, probably a bit lower down, but they will be on the outside and held off a bit. I can't do those because of the missing bits. Um, and what that means is that the... Um, <coughs> The metal frame will be holding the whole thing up. So hopefully this makes sense. That's kind of attached up there and then down at the bottom and there's a a quick release thing that comes out there. These will of course be screwed down, they're just resting at the moment. So I think what I need to do is to adjust this bow so that um, this, what should we call it, the front bow or secondary bow is kind of stretched out nicely so it's the same distance from this seam all the way along which is not too far away from but then at the same time adjust it so that this primary bow I think is going along this seam and this is quite a long way out so this is going to need adjusting where this is and also shortening this. Now I don't want to cut the stainless steel so I'm going to do my famous uh, putting in a plastic um, pipe thing. Now the nice thing about this this time is I do actually have the stainless tube so I can kind of make sure that the curves etc are, are pretty much spot on and as you can see that's pretty much spot on so um, I can now fiddle about to the hearts to my heart's content. Um, I can make this longer, shorter, slide it up and down and um, see, if I, see if I'm going to fit. Right, so lots of, lots of fiddling um, and something which kind of should have been obvious to me earlier but it wasn't, is that where these two seams meet, um, the seam coming up here, seam coming up there, that, that's kind of exactly where the hinge should go. Um, it worked out that way by kind of stretching it correctly but that's fairly obvious and I've done it the same on either side. So you can see here that that's where the seam is and it's kind of all nicely lined up now and I've got the um, the stainless secondary hoop on and put these these fittings on. This has only moved up a slight amount and that's only come in a tiny bit. As I say very tiny changes make actually quite big <laughs> changes on the fabric something I really didn't understand properly. So what I've done this is quite difficult to video is I sort of prop this thing up on on, on boxes so this is not as taut as I would like it to be but um, I've pretty much got the shape there and it's all sort of held up um, with faith and string. Um, here's the bit what I was saying this this sort of straight line I think that should be more or less sort of parallel um, and I've got all the the prime and the secondary hoops kind of in the right direction and um, Right, a thought occurred to me that obviously I've been very lucky being able to get the, um, the stainless piping and the, the alternative plan was to, to take one of these which I've modified with two different size holes, get the, get the kind of shape and then get this fabricated and that wouldn't have been difficult to do because there are places around the place that I'm getting to do my rudder stop for example, I'm sure they could have easily done this. Um, but originally I was going to, instead of using plastic tubing, I was going to use copper pipe uh, the problem with copper pipe is it tends to bend a bit sort of suddenly and, and quickly and it's very difficult to get the smooth curve where the, whereas this follows a natural curve. <laughs> and then it just occurred to me that actually what I could have done and uh, who knows in the future I might make a bimini and if I do a bimini I shall use this technique um, is to use this 15mm 
fairly substantial pipe. You can you can use this for sort of hot water and in central heatings and stuff. Um, and put the copper pipe inside it and see if it, that gives a bit more sort of stability when you bend it because this tends to be a bit too flexible and you have to kind of tie it up with string and so on to keep the maintain the exact shape you want. So let's see if that's going to work. I'm not sure if it's going to work or not. So here's the, here's the 10 millimeter copper pipe which comes in a sort of a tube. So I'm going to, I'm going to straighten a bit of this out, sh shove it in, in one of those pipes and see if that's, um, if that's actually an option. Right, so I've shoved some copper pipe through here and let's see how bendy this is and how well it sort of stays to shape. Actually, do you know what? That is a result. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't somebody suggest this in the first video? Um, that's fabulous because what you get here is you get the nice smoothness of the sort of, of the plasticity and it stays in shape. It's a little bit sort of sensitive because it's not finding its own shape but um, if I ever need to do this again and if I need to make up a sort of a pattern then this is what I will do because look you know I can Let's start with that shape and let's say the bimini needs to be a little bit more sort of squared off and then flattened at the top. <coughs> um, you, you can make the shape bend it to your heart's content, get it exactly right, nice and smooth, and that would be a lot easier to make a pattern from. Um, and this is 15 millimeter and I've, I've the Stainless is probably, I don't know if you can get thicker versions of this, you probably don't need it, but that would be very, very easy to make a, um, a pattern from. So yeah, isn't it nice when you get a good idea like that right at the end, <laughs> nearly at the end of the job. But so I, I thought I'd just throw that in because that's um, something that occurred to me that should have occurred here anyway. Um, if anybody tries that, let me know, let me know how it goes. So at that point we're gonna we're gonna leave it there. There will be a part three to this, but um, the reason for not finishing off there's two there's well there's a few few reasons. One, um, I've had this most awful cold, which seems to have gone onto my chest and up to my head and all over the place um, for the last uh, week or so. So I haven't actually been able to do anything. And now the weather's turned really nasty. We had 50 mile an hour winds today. Um, there's snow over the UK, and I wanted to get a new another video out before the end of. December so it might be some time before I, I get the next one out because the next stage obviously is to take I've got the basic sh shape I've got the hoops sorted out um, and let's put a little graphic up here so what I can do basically now is I need to figure out how far up and down I can go um, and that will be dependent on on putting the sail up on a calm day and actually measuring and making sure I'm not going to go too high because I want it as high as possible and then kind of backwards and forwards um, and there's not an awful lot of leeway in terms of tipping it front and back because I think the bottom bit needs to be kind of parallel um, and I'm sure the turn buttons are going to need to be changed and that's going to need painstaking <coughs> some painstaking sort of adjusting stuff which I need a good day for. The other thing is I want to do, and let's have a look at these, I want to um, put in a, put this sort of hinge arrangement on the outside uh, for the grab rail and I haven't got the bits yet they're, they're, they're on back order the bits uh, some of the other bits that I need for that um, if you want to look at how to do that I would highly recommend the Sailrite uh, website and they've got a whole little video series on how to make well actually they sell they sell this all together in a kit but it's it's fairly easy to make it I think they show how to make a grab rail and how to me measure it up if you're going to have a grab rail on the outside um, so have a look at that so yeah, there will be a part three, probably when it's sunny, so apologies for that, but that's the way it goes, we can't, <laughs> you, you know my plans by now if you've seen these videos before. Um, but just a quick, let's, let's just finish with just a quick co comment on the water tank, because as I said, I did do some measuring up, I wanted 150 litres of water, um, and I've gone out and bought a, a 107 litre tank. So this next little clip will we'll sort of go through some of the rationale of that. And by the way, this is a bit strange because the sound didn't work, so I've had to voice over it. So you'll see my lips moving and the, the words coming out are completely different. But anyway, um, let's have a little look at this and, um, and then I shall see you hopefully with another video before the, end of, uh, before the end of December. So I said two reasons. So why the smaller 107 
litre tank? Well, first of all, it fits and it's a lot cheaper. It's about £112 as opposed to, I don't know what a bespoke one would be, six £700. Um, I'd still have to take the middle part out, um, but it, it will fit and we'll do a video on that later. So first of all, it's cheaper. And secondly, I kind of wanted a separate water system. If I have a water maker, I'll need um, some sort of tank to put this in. So I got two of these, quite substantial. They are 23 litres each, so I can keep one down there and the other one can go in the somewhere else. Um, and they're quite neat, they've got this little tap type thing, so I thought this is probably the best of, of both worlds. And anyway, we'll cover this in a later video. So it wasn't to be, it wasn't quite finished, but I think you can see um, where it's going to, and obviously the, the next bit I will, I will fit in at some point, but it probably won't be the next video. Loads more stuff to come, the rudder stock is being made, um, windows are being ordered and obviously there's the water tank and so on to fit plus a few other bits and pieces so let's maybe we'll get another one in December not quite sure maybe the Christmas special